as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. We want to welcome everyone um, today to King James Bible University. Also, we want to welcome everyone from the internet coming in through different areas. We want to welcome also <clears throat> people who, who have joined in by phone conference. We want to thank each and every person that's coming in. And today we're going to be teaching on a couple of different things today. We want to uh, get a few things straight before we... Uh, get deeper into this I want to um, straighten out a few things here that we having a few problems with to make just to make sure that we can get everything correctly so we have everything pretty much straight right now so we want to thank everybody and what we're going to do today we're going to be going through about Jesus we're going to see is Jesus the seed of God or of David we're going to find out exactly which one he is, and we're going to march through these scriptures to, to make sure, and we're going to precept them correctly to make sure, and we can find out exactly which one he is actually coming from. Because we have many people who goes into the, the Sunday church. We have people who's in the Sabbath churches. We have many of them going through, but when it gets to, is Jesus the son of God or is Jesus the son of David? This is where everything starts getting hairy. And we have many of them hold to the same belief it identical the same but we want to find out is he actually is one or the other because if people believe this one way then we still going into a false doctrine and that's what we have to watch out for because you're still area in scripture and if we can't pinpoint exactly where Jesus is and who he actually came from we always going to incorrectly in misjudgment and go through other scriptures and won't actually be precepting them correctly because we're going to see things a lot differently just to justify ourselves on what we're doing. So we're going to jump into it and we want to find out exactly what he's doing. And we're actually going to be having a, a, a recorded uh, message going through to make sure that during the reading we can stay pretty much on time and something that was a uh, courtesy of King James Bible University on what they can do. Because we're going to go through these scriptures, we're going to find out exactly what things actually mean. Because when the Lord himself say he will, he shall give us a sign, is nowhere in there where he said that, you know, a virgin shall conceive and bear my son. He said that he should give you a sign. So what we're going to do, we're going to start, we're going to pick that up at Isaiah 7. We're going to pick it up at 14. And seven and fourteen. Once we get there, we're gonna we're gonna take it right off, and and we're gonna start going through it. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. So, as I was saying, He said, "A virgin shall shall conceive and bear a son." But you see, it's noticing; it's not saying His son. So she shall conceive, but bear a son, and we're gonna we're gonna let it finish out. So we're going to have Echo resume. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now, now, now what he was saying in, in the next verse, butter and honey, where people have a lot, a lot of times they mix that up. Because what the butter and honey mean, he's going to eat the fattest part of the word. So, and what you, and where you get butter from, you actually get it from milk. So if you're getting it from the milk, and he's saying butter and honey shall he eat, he's getting the fattest part of the word. He's not he's not playing with the with with with, with the lighter parts. He's getting the thicker part of the word, but 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 it's gonna be but it, but but it's sweet as honey. 
So we understand in exactly what we're going to be going through. And we're going to pick up some more of this over here in Isaiah 22 to make sure exactly what he was saying all the time. And it shall come to pass, for the abundance of milk that they shall give, he shall eat butter. For butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. So uh, what he also saying, so the butter is going to be, once he well, once he leaves there, butter and honey, and then what they're going to do, they're going to be eating the butter. They're going to be eating the fatter part of the word. But what we have done, many of us, has lost that, and we end up still going to where we're still on milk, and we never be on meat. We think we on meat, but we actually being on milk. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pause, and we're gonna look at this firstborn, and we're gonna go into where where God actually promised a certain thing. So we're gonna we're gonna pick this up over in Psalms. So we're gonna go over to Psalms, and we're gonna pick this up at eighty nine. Psalms eighty nine, and we're gonna pick it up right there, and we're gonna get some some serious information here, and we're gonna we're gonna see what happened uh let me get down to psalms 89 one second because once we get there we'll just go ahead and pick it up from right there psalms 89 and we're going to pick it up at 24 psalms 89 and 24 and we're, we're once we get there we're going we're gonna to start running it right on through so 89 and 30 and 24 we're going to start there and we're gonna see what he's gonna say there, because it's gonna be something very important, which he, with, with some information we need to actually get to make sure we completely understand what he's saying. So once he get it, go ahead and just read it. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him. So. We also got to look at where he said he's going to be my God, my Father, and my Rock, myself, and my. And then he also telling him he's going to be his firstborn. So we're going to repeat this so where you can understand exactly what he's saying all the time. Echo, repeat. Him, my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. So we clearly know that he's going to be his firstborn. But if you remember, his firstborn is Israel. So he's not talking about his firstborn of, 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 of the flesh. So we have to keep this, always keep these things in, in, in remember. As he sit there saying, this is going to be his firstborn, and we're going to actually even replay it again to where you can understand. He's telling you this is his firstborn in his but first. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Mm -hmm. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. So we are clear. He's going to be his firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. So as long as we understand what's going on there, we clearly know that he was being, this This one is being promised something. So if he's being promised something, we have to understand exactly who this promise is going to. Because most people want to still continue to say that he's coming from the seed of, of, of God. But we see it, but we're gonna start seeing here where he constantly he's starting to do these promises, but he's promising a fleshly person. And this is what we need to understand. So we're gonna pick some of this up and we're gonna look at Psalms 89 and 3 because he says something very important there. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. See. So if he's saying he made a covenant with his chosen. And, and we can go right to look at right at Psalms 89 and 3. And he has sworn unto his servant David that that thy seed he shall establish forever and build up all and build up thy throne to all generations. So if he if he's stating this, we know exactly what he's talking about. 
we know clearly what he's doing here. He's doing he's doing one specific thing there to where he's dealing with a person, a fleshly person, to what he's going to do this through. So many people continue to sit there and say that he's sitting he's setting this up with um with David, and then some would sit there and say that he's setting up for himself to come, but he but he's promising something to a fleshly body. This is what we always got to remember. He's promising it to a fleshly body. And we're going to pick up a little bit more of this. We're going to look at uh, Psalms 89 and, and 89 and, uh, and 20. We're going, to get a, we're going to get a little bit more information there. So and, and right there, when we look at Psalms 89 and 20, it tells you clearly, I have found David, my servant, with whom my holy oil have I anointed him. So if he if he's sitting there and he's telling you with his servant David that he this is who he had known it, this is his servant. So he's being very clear here because he's speaking of a fleshly person. But we're gonna find out later, you're gonna find out some really, really important things to which he's gonna do. And we're gonna we're gonna keep moving this down and we're gonna we're gonna keep seeing how he's gonna be talking to this one fleshly person. To where we're going to see, to where it's clearly not talking about that Jesus is coming from him as a seed, but he actually doing something else. So we're going to look at it. We're going to look at this. We're going to pick this up still at Psalms 89. We're going to pick it up at 34. He says, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. So he's not going to alter the things that have gone out of his lips. Then he even goes on more. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. So he's telling you clearly here, he will not even lie unto David. So, and then he even goes on more. It says, his seed shall endure forever. So now if his seed is going to endure forever, how is it that David's seed end up being from the seed that, 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 that God planted in Mary? But we're going, to, we're going to deal with all this. All this we're going to deal with. But he's telling you clearly right here, he's telling you he will not lie unto David. So we're talking about a fleshly person that he's not going to lie and that his throne, he, 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 he going, you know, he's going to have a son who's going to endure forever. But he, said, but he says right there, in his seed shall endure forever. So he's saying his seed. Understand what that is saying. So we're going we're gonna to pick up a little bit more because everybody going to do something, but we're going to do a little caveat here because some people asked this question and this question was asked to me and we're going to address this and we're going to go right back into it because this has a lot to do with the lesson, but this question was actually asked to me and I, and I decided to where we're going we're gonna to address it right in this lesson here. We're going to go to Matthew 22 and 40 and 41. 22 and 41 and we're going to see something very very profound that's going to be asked here because what happened here they asked jesus well jesus asked these pharisees a question and once he asked them this question they didn't have no answer but we're going to read this and we're going to see is it an answer to it or or is it not or was jesus just tripping them up just for them so they wouldn't know we're going to pick this up at matthew 22 and 41 matthew 22 and 41 it says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? And, it, and then it goes on, and then uh, it says, They say unto him, the son of David. So now they clearly letting you know they saying the son of David. But watch, but watch how he said, he said, The Lord, he said, he said, and he said unto them, how then do David, understand what this is saying, how then do David in spirit call him saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on thy right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. This is what he said. Now, many people use this, and I was actually told this, and they were sitting there saying, you know, he's he's speaking of himself, and that and he's talking about God sit there and it's showing you that he is that seed, but it's not saying that. 
if you use precept, this question is actually answered because we're going to find out something that's very, very, very profound that most people don't even look at. But we're going to see why did Jesus say that? And is it something to it? Because if you always remember, when you look at, look at that last part, we're going to look at the last part because he, he closes out. He said, and then if David then called him Lord, how is he his son? Because it don't make sense. So if he said, Lord, sit next to my Lord until I make thy enemies a footstool. So if David called him Lord, then how is he the son? It makes no sense. But through precepts, it's going to make complete sense. Because anytime you see a question mark anywhere in your scriptures, anywhere in the Bible, it's not something to where you just render your own understanding. It's precepts there that clears this up, that tell, is telling you to research this to get the correct understanding. That's all it's really saying. But we're going to find out, and we're going to get some information right here, right now. We're going to go to Acts. We're going to pick this up at Acts and 2, and we're going, to, we're going to park right at 34. Acts 2 and 34. Acts 2 and 34. And, and, watch, and watch how much it clears up, because many people talk about Paul in many times, and, and Paul, as I always tell people, Paul speaks, 85% of the time, he speaks all scripture, pretty much all the time. But people, but, but people is one of the most misunderstood writers in this book. But people love to run to him. But we're going to look at something very profound in, in Acts 2 and 34. It says, for David is not ascended into the heavens. So we know David has not ascended into the heavens. But we know right here, David's been dead. But he's making it clear to where he's clearing up what Jesus said. We're going to keep moving. It says, but he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on thy right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. So he's clearing some of this up, but, but, but watch how we're going to clear all this up. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, the same Jesus who said this. Who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, some of you might figure that might be a little confusing, so I precepted even more to where we're going to clear a lot of this up because it's going to clear up completely in one second. We're going to pick up another piece to understand why Jesus was made Lord in Christ. We're going to find out why. We're going to look at 1 Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings. We're going to go to 1 and 37. We're going to pick up a piece there. It says, as for the Lord, it have been with my Lord, the king. Now, this is actually talking about David. Understand what it's saying. He's calling them, as the Lord have been with my Lord, the king. Even so be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. This is what Jesus was been saying. This is what Paul made clear, but we're going to make it even clearer because we see David was also called Lord. So we're going to, we're going to get some better understanding. We're going to go, going to keep marching down. We're going to get a clear understanding. We're going to go to first Samuel, first Samuel. We're going to pick it up at 25. We're going to pick it up at 30, 25 and 30. They say they should come to pass. When thy Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee and have appointed thee ruler over Israel. This is what he's done. So what it's showing you? It's showing you some or a certain thing that this is talking about people. So when Jesus said this, the same as he tripped him up with the penny, because when he asked him, you know, um, bring me bring me a penny, he said, who's in scriptures on it? Because what they were doing, they were saying, should we pay tribute to Caesar or no? So he told him to bring him a penny. Because they were trying to trip him up. And he said, who's in scripture on it? They say Caesar. He said, so render to Caesar what is Caesar and render to God what is God. So, and but then most people always overlook what it's saying there. But if you look at the next verse, it said, 
and they marveled. And this is all he said. So why did they marvel? They marveled for a reason. If you go to Genesis 126, it clears it. It says, let us make man in our own image, in our own inscription. That's why they marveled. They marveled at how well he can, when they try to trip him up, he'll run precepts on them. I'm talking about just verbatim. Because that's how well he knew the scriptures. Because we have to understand what we're dealing with and who we're dealing with. And he did and he did the same thing over here. So the same thing when he was speaking of David, and when David said that, Lord sit next to my Lord, who he was referring to all the time, he was referring to Abraham. That's why he tripped him up. This is what this is what it, this is what it was saying, and this is what it was meaning. And we're gonna pick it up to find out exactly what was going on. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at this, and we're gonna go, we're gonna pick it up at Genesis, and we're gonna see exactly what it was saying. We're gonna pick it up at Genesis 23, and we're gonna see uh, exactly what some of it was saying. And then we're gonna explain, we're gonna start explaining what's going on. Genesis 23, we're gonna pick it up at one. Genesis 23 and pick it up at one. And we're gonna go in, we're gonna go on from there. As soon as it gets it, it's gonna, it's gonna go ahead and they're gonna read it. And we're gonna see exactly what it was saying the entire time as we was going through this. Genesis and um And Sarah was an hundred and seven and twenty years old. Mm -hmm. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee. Now you hear exactly what he said. My lord. They referring to Abraham as my lord. So we have to understand exactly his sepulchre what they're that thou mayest bury thy dead. So we clearly know they referred even to Abraham, and they said that he is a mighty prince. So since he was a mighty prince to them, and they considered him my lord, the same thing. Meaning all that meaning in the scripture is my master. So we have to understand always what that's always saying. So when you're looking at my master, my lord, it's saying the same thing. That's why you see in some of the scriptures when you get back in the, in the New Testament, many of them call Jesus master. Reason they were saying master because that's Lord meaning the same thing. So, so when so when Jesus sit there and look, and this is and this is why Jesus got on many of them many times. We're gonna pick up and find out what people actually do, and what do they actually do. We're gonna pick it up. We're gonna look at Mark. We're gonna go to twelve. We're gonna look at twenty four. Mark 12, and we're going to look at 24. And it said, Jesus answered and said, un, said, said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. This is the problem that we must go through. Most people always go through this. They, they, they don't know the error because they, don't, they know not the scriptures. They say they do. And some of them will sit there and run, and run some good correlations together but they always will err when they try to do the precepts of the Bible. And when they're doing the precepts of the Bible, they start messing up in a lot of different directions and they start doing it. We're going to look at another part. We're going to go to um, uh, the same part and we're going to go to, we're going to drop down to 27. It says for, it says, he is not God of the dead, but God of the living. Ye do therefore do greatly err. That's what most people don't understand. When the same thing, when, 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 when Abraham said, he wanted to put his dead out of his sight. So we got to understand, when Jesus coming back, he's only raising the living who obeyed him. So most people, you, you, you miss this in a lot of different ways. He is not the God of the dead. Many, as we are right now, many of us, if we walking in the spirit of God, we, we're dead men walking. Because the flesh is dead to him. It's sinful. That's something that he's he's not trying to save, and he don't have no reason to try to save it. So we're gonna look at it even some more, because as much as you want to change uh, much of this and believe that Jesus is from the seed of God, 
it's really impossible to, to even see that because we're going to, as we continue to march on, you're going to see it going to start honing in more and more and get a good understanding of exactly what's happened. We're going to go run over to Jeremiah 33 and we're going to pick it up at 20. We're going to pick it up at uh, 20 on, 30, uh, on, on 33. But what we have to understand is what he actually promised to David. But people can continue on and sit there and say that David is 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 you know is this heavenly being and he constantly tell you he said David has not ascended to heaven. Paul cleared that. But most people will sit there and, and talk about when Jesus said, you know, my Lord uh, Lord sit next to my Lord, he's talking about them two just sitting there talking. But what he was sitting there talking about, Lord sit next to my Lord. Because that throne belongs to David, and he's gonna put his son on it. This is all he was saying. Till he make his enemies his footstool. So we have to understand exactly what's going on. We're gonna pick it up at Jeremiah 33 and 20. 33 and 20. It says, Thus said the Lord, if thou can break my covenant, very clear, if the day in my covenant of night, and there should not be day and night in their season. Understand what he is saying right there. Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, as he's been saying the entire time. So if you can change the day and the night, you make the sun don't come up in the day and, and make the moon don't come up at night. He said, then may, may, uh, may my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son. So now he, it's not saying God going to have. He's saying that David not going to have a son to reign upon his throne. So he's clearly making you very clear. He's going to have a son who's going to reign upon his throne. And I will, and, and with the Levites and prince and, uh, and priests, my ministers. So he's making himself extremely, extremely clear exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to even go more deeper into it, talking about, the seed, the seed from the sperm. He's talking about from the seed of David. He ain't talking about the seed of God because we're going we're gonna to deal with that in a little bit. We're going to pick it up a little bit more. We're going to jump down to 25. It says, Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed all the ordinances of the heavens and earth. Understand what he's saying. So he has directed the heavens and the earth in the day and night, he's directed them to do something. So it's nothing nobody can do. I don't care what you do. You cannot change that. This is something that cannot be changed. This is what he's making perfectly clear. He said, then, then I would cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant. Now he's saying, then he'll cast them off. But he's saying, you, you have to be able to change I'm talking about the sun and the moon and the in the ordinances on how this earth operates. He's talking about a fleshly person. But we're gonna keep moving down. It says, and then uh in uh well we'll go back to it says, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. This is what he's saying. He's making himself so clear it's unreal. Because he's saying, if you can change this, this is what he would do. But people want to continually say that Jesus is from the seed of God. And we're going we're gonna to keep honing in on this. And we see it all, all through Scripture. That's why we have to go back into this old, old Scripture. Because as we're going through there, this is what it's talking about. It's just honing in really just on David. This is what he is saying. We're going to pick up another piece right here. We're going to go to Genesis 3 and 14. Genesis 3 and 14. Most of us know what's going on right there. 3 and 14. And it says, it says right there, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. 
Upon thy belly shall thy go, in the dust in the in the, in dust shall thy eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So he's gonna put enmity between the woman and the serpent. And and, and it says in 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 between the seed and her seed. So we know that the serpent has seeds, which when you're doing acts of the serpent, you his seed. And same as and same as the woman. And it shall bruise thy head, and, and thy shall bruise thy heel. So he's making himself clear. But Moses is going to clarify some things for you. We're going to pick it up at Moses. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. We're going to pick it up at 18 and 15. We're going to go to Deuteronomy and pick it up at 18 and 15. And we're going to see, because Moses made some things perfectly clear here that we need to understand and when most people sit there and um, uh, say some things about it, they want to sit there and then they don't know what's going on. But we're going to pick this up to get an understanding exactly what he, what he was saying about, about him. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, mm -hmm. of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desiredst of the Lord thy God in hope. Now, we clearly understand what he just said. He said he's going to raise up a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. So if he's from the seed of God, just coming through Mary, that seed is not a David. But we're going to, we're going to take care of some seed parts in a minute. But he's telling you right there. Echo, repeat. Echo, repeat. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, mm -hmm. of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desiredst of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my... So he keep telling him, he's going to raise up another prophet like unto him. My words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So everyone that who don't obey him, he's going to require it because he's going to hold him responsible exactly what is going on. He's going to hold each and every person because they 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 don't they don't want to sit in front of him no more because he's scared he's scared of half to death. But you're supposed to fear the Lord. But we're gonna but we're gonna get into this because now we're gonna get into these prophets prophesying and telling you how they're gonna raise this one. So the first one still we're gonna go right back to Isaiah seven and fourteen. It says, therefore the Lord Himself. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. He didn't say, I shall give you a seed. Two different things. I, he's going to give you a sign. He gives you certain weathers and, and trees and signs and weather and all this stuff. What? For signs and seasons. Same thing with this one. So the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. It don't say, and a virgin shall conceive. Or she going, or he's gonna, he's gonna make her conceive and bear a son. He didn't say and she have my son. He said and she bear a son. It's not talking about none of his. And his name should be called Emmanuel, God with us. But he makes that perfectly clear based on what he continually say. Let's keep going down. And when we get down to Isaiah nine and six. Isaiah 96, he makes it even uh, more evident on what's going on. Because we're going to look at 9 and 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. So it's not telling you that God is born. It's saying unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. A son is given. And a government shall be put upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, 
the prince of peace. And, uh, and of this increase, his government in peace, there should be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. So we know clearly here on what he's saying. This is the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob and have and, and it had lightened upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim, even the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride of his stoutness in heart. So we clearly know what is going on right up in here because it's ma he's making it so clear here is unreal but now we're going to go down and we're going to see and, 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 and show you how these signs work because when you look at Luke uh, 3 and 22 it talks about the same thing it actually gives you the same account where he goes and he talks with Mary but we're going to, but we're going to look at 11 Isaiah 11 we're going to pick it up at two. We're going to pull two verses there. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Understand what it just said. It shall rest upon him. I want you to remember that because some people say, When it said, The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon well, shall come upon you. The same thing what it said to Mary. But the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The same one and the same thing. But we're going to, we're going to clear this up. But this is where people start getting everything hairy and start messing stuff up. And it says the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So we're talking about six different spirits that's going to that that this rest that's going to rest up on him. But we're going we're going to check out something in a minute. And and shall make him quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And his and his and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. Because what he's gonna do, he's gonna look upon your heart every time. Because you have to remember what spirit is sitting on here. But we're gonna tell you what, most people in here, and when they want to talk about children, which we're gonna make some stuff perfectly clear, when you're talking about little children, little babies that's already born, not talking about it in the womb, but once they're born. You can't show nowhere in Scripture, nowhere in Scripture, where the Holy Spirit was resting upon that baby. Nowhere. You're not going to find it. But people want to sit there and say that he was God from the baby. And they, you know, they want to say, they want to tell you all these different things. But nowhere in Scripture will you find, because it'll tell you that as he was growing up, he was growing straight, growing, growing straight with, uh, with strong, with wisdom and understanding. And even when he was twelve years old, he went into the he went into the synagogue, and they was astonished at the knowledge that he had. But if you understand this, you never see where it said the spirit of the Lord was ever upon him, because you never heard about it at that point. You can't show me nowhere in the Bible where you see a child that is born, that is walking around, that was filled with the Holy Spirit. You have people who do, use YouTube; they do different things. They they showing these babies talking about they feel with the Holy Spirit. They're doing all these things. And this is nothing but foolishness and false doctrine and heresy. This is all it is. And as, as most people know, I don't use I don't use pagan because pagan is nowhere in the King James Bible. It's heathen. Heathen is a person who is act technically you are an enemy to God. You are actually an atheist. Because you believe nothing God say, and all you do is twist the words around to make it to your own understanding, to your own belief. To where you justify yourself. That's what this does. But what we got to understand, this is seven spirits that rested up on him. We got it saying it right there: the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. That that and then uh, of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And what we're going to do? We got six right there, but it's seven spirits that he needs, and we're going to clear that up. We're going to clear up a whole lot of heresy that people have done and why they're sitting there and they always err in Scripture and let the understanding, many err with understanding. And we're going to start breaking all this down and we're going to start getting a whole lot of understanding on a whole lot of this. We're going to go to Luke 1 and 38. 
Luke 1, we're going to pick it up at 38. And we're going to see right there, we're going we're to take 38, we're going to go down to 43. So 38, it says, And Mary said, Behold, thy handmaid of the Lord, be it unto, uh, unto me according to thy word. And the angel, oh, wait a minute, I did, I did do a, oh, yeah, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, I'm, right, I'm right there, right. And, uh, departed, and the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hills, and it went to the hill country with haste unto the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. But watch something that is very funny was going to happen. And this is where many, many people err because I was actually, they actually brought this up to me with somebody else brought this up to me and literally completely, I'm talking about terrorized the scripture. But we're gonna but we're gonna straighten this out. It says, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna check a few things, and this is why people err with scripture, because we gotta understand Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna finish this out because we're gonna we're gonna see a couple of other things ha happen. It says, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. They mess up also right there. And whence is uh, this this to me, that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. This is what she's sitting there thinking for. Because what we got to understand is a couple of things where people mess up at. Because this, this verse right here, it has a lot of meat right there, which a lot of people get choked on because they're dealing with meat and they and they only understand milk. So we have to understand exactly what was going on right here. And we're going to straighten a lot of that out. We're going to jump down because it says, why did, you know, well, they asked, why did Elizabeth make that statement that the mother of my Lord come to me? But Mary going to tell you what happened because they think as soon as that happened, this is what happened. But Mary going to sit there and explain what went on. And we're going to pick that up at Luke 1 and 44. Luke 1 and 44. We're going to see exactly what we're saying right there. Luke 1 and 44. And it's going to tell you something very interesting that, that went on. Luke 1 and 44. And we're going to, we're going Hello. To as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a... Understand what happened. Blessed is she that believed. But what we're going to find out is that from the beginning, with, with Mary. See, Mary, the, the Holy Spirit was with her all the time. But it said that she will be filled. We're going to clear all this up because we're talking about something that's going to happen. So when she walked in and she did the salutation, the Holy Spirit went and leaped. And it, and it also went on Mary. I mean, on Elizabeth. Once it went on Elizabeth, this is what was going on. But now Mary is going to get ready and she's going to tell you all what, 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 what actually happened. Performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, mm -hmm. and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So, so right there, we see what happened there. But the main thing is we're going to see why the baby leaped as i told you once it once it said what happened 
it shows you that that the baby leaped in her but we're going to see exactly why that happened in that way because it said at the beginning what was going to happen we're going to pick that up to get that piece to understand exactly what went on we're going to pick that up at luke 1 and 13. pick it up at luke 1 and 13 and we're going to see what happened right here because he's the lord uh gave the, the gable angel angel going to tell zachariah exactly what's going to happen and we're going, to, we're going to understand one thing. What we really got to understand, one, is context of words. Context of words, and we also got to say, understand etymology. Etymology. We have to understand the origin of words and understand actually how they're being used. Because most people, they want to run to, they want to go run to a dictionary, and the Bible is itself a dictionary. It tells you it tells you clearly exactly what it is. But what most people like to use, they like to use Zondervan and, 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 and Harper's. And when you're using the Zondervan and Harper dictionaries, you're actually using a, the same company when people say they don't want to have no nothing to deal with with, 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 with Satan or, or satanic stuff. These are the same people that actually print those same Bibles. This is who they this is what they do. And they print anybody Bible who's willing to pay. They print out anything that's people willing to pay. But you're willing to hold on per se to the word of God, but you're willing to to, to purchase something from somebody who's willing to make money from anywhere they can get it from. And if satanic stuff is working for them, they're willing to sell it. You can go to their site and you can see it for yourself. But we're going to see why this baby leaped and why we got to understand exactly what this scripture is saying. We're going to look at Luke 1 and 13. Luke 1 and 13, we're going to move down. It said, But the angel said unto, unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear, uh, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So he, you, they can't even name John. He's telling you what this name is going to be right off the bat. And then it says, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. So many are going to rejoice at his birth. And watch this. It says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. So now he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost understand what happened he shall be filled with the holy ghost so we know he's not being filled at the pregnancy but as, as well let's read down this last part it said he shall be filled with the holy ghost even from his mother's womb so even while she's pregnant she will be filled with the holy spirit that's going to come up on her how did that happen that came when mary came in because what mary already mary already had the holy spirit on her so when she came in the holy spirit also went on elizabeth that's all that happened this is why the baby jumped this is where most people mess up because shell when you go look up shell is expressing a future tense of what will happen after she was pregnant you can even go look that up even in 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 any most modern dictionary in the most one if you're going to use a dictionary Use the one that King James actually created, and that's at Oxford, or you use a Cambridge dictionary. I wouldn't use no um no uh no uh Zondervan anything because because they're willing to, to, to do anything to make money. So you have to watch that. But this is what happened. So it says she shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. So once she shall be, he's telling you, okay, once she's pregnant, but then once he come to that, you know, once Mary come there something going to happen. But what they did, they had to take the Lord's word for it and what happened. We're going to go to Luke 1 and 26. Luke 1 and 26. And it says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel went, went from, uh, was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth. A virgin. Now this is, I'm talking about so clear, it's, it's unreal so clear unreal but people like to use different words and terminology and we're going to see and as i go i ne really need to clear these to make sure that we all have the same understanding but he says right there and a virgin expiles to the man whose name was joseph now expile they want to say that she was technically married in that day in that time and that's and this is not true she was actually sitting there she was engaged in what you'll call in this day and time but you have people who will sit there will tell you misconstrued information telling you, well, it was actually married. And that's not true. But we're going to see what happened because once you marry, in that old time, what happened is once you marry, he would have went into her. So if, if a man goes into you back in that biblical time, you actually end up being married. 
That's what happens back then. It's not something to where once you expose to her, because most times they they be exposed at young ages. Some of them are exposed to them even from birth. So we have to understand what's going with exactly what's going on. Two two a cousin and a friend can sit there and expose their children to each other, and then once they get older, and all they have to do is complete that out, and all they have to do is go into her, and this it's a wrap at that point. Then she becomes the husband or the wife. But we're gonna see exactly what it's saying here because this is this is why it's very important to understand the Hebrew language. You understand the Hebrew culture. Because when you try to look at stuff and you change things and you then you also use your own your, the wrong um, material study material to do these things, you're gonna always come up with the wrong answers. So we're gonna see watch how the language change in the same verse. Because it, it, it goes clearly right through here. We're gonna pick it right back up at twenty seven. And it tells you right there. Uh, it says in the virgin, in, in today version, espoused to the man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. So we clearly know David is of the house of Joseph. I mean, uh, Joseph is from the house of David. We clearly know he's from the seed line of David. This is perfectly clear right here because who was from the house, who was of the house of David? In the virgin, in the virgin name was Mary. Now watch this. And the angel came and said, and said unto her, and said, Hail, thou shalt be highly favored. The Lord is with thee, and blessed art, 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 uh, art thou among women. So we see that she's blessed among women, but it's telling you she's engaged right at this point. But watch how language is going to change. Now we're going to pick it up at 30. It says, And the angel said, and the angel said unto, un, unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive. So he's telling her, thou shalt conceive. It don't say nothing about the Lord shall 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 plant anything. You're gonna conceive. How are you gonna conceive? You're gonna conceive just like everybody else conceive. You're not gonna have some special conceive, you know, special way you're gonna conceive anything. You're gonna conceive just like everybody. He said, You should conceive in thy womb. And shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So the same as with John, the same as with Samson. They don't, they don't, they don't let you name certain ones. Samson was named, but with John and Jesus, they, they no, you weren't gonna name them at all. He's he's making sure they go with what their name's gonna be. And then he said, He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him, shall give unto him the throne of his father. So it's clearly letting you know. Now the angel Gabriel, understand, who stands in front of God, came and talked to Mary. Told Mary that she's going to conceive a son. You're not going to name him. We going to name him. His name going to be Jesus, and he's going to, he's going to, he and the father going to give him. The throne of his father, David. He didn't say nothing about his throne of the father, but it's talking about David. And it says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and the king in his kingdom there shall have no end. Then Mary said, and then then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? See, seeing I know not a man. This is another part. This is where most people, they just jack up scripture because why they jack up scripture? Because they don't, one, they don't know precepts. One, two, they're not looking at um, Hebrew understanding to where they're going back and looking at the foundation to understand exactly how to understand scripture. Because what they do, they just go right here and then they want to go off their own interpretation. And we can't use no interpretation because there's no interpretation, have a private interpretation. So we have many churches teaching this, this jacked up teaching. So we're going, but we're going to understand today exactly what's going on. We're going to pick this up at 35. We're going to pick it up at 35, Luke 1 and 35, because we're going to, we're going to answer many questions. So she's in not knowing a man. It says, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. So we knew most people sit there thinking that he's going to come up on top of her. That's what most people think. But we already seen where some things happen, but we're going to clear up some of this stuff. And it says, uh, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. This is another part where they, they screw up. 
and uh, overshadowed thee. Therefore, also that that holy thing, why are you going to call it a holy thing if, it, if it's this child? We need to understand this. That holy thing shall be uh, shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. So now he's going to be called the son of God. Same as many people will screw up. So what we want to do, we want to understand a couple of things. We want to know what come upon thee mean. We want to know what the power of the highest mean. And we want to know what overshadowing mean. We need to know what these things mean. We're not going into a Zondervan. We're not going. In, we're not going into a Cambridge dictionary, which I have them here. But we're not going into it. We're not going into those. What we're going to do? We're going to get these definitions as what I do teach, and then what we do do, we, we do out of King James Bible University. You're going to get your definitions out of the Bible because, as I continually tell people, the King James Bible is a dictionary, a Bible, and a commentary all wrapped into one. He tells you in Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. Be admonished for making many books. The word is on the flesh. He tells you in Isaiah, you only need this one book. So if you only need this one book, he also put his definition there, and that's why he says study to show that self approved Not study and use other books to come in and couple them with it to where you can prove something, because God don't have to be proven to nobody. All he needs is this book. And if you don't like it, then, then so be it. Because I'm going to tell you, on no other book have anywhere or who or the writer of that book do not have a heaven or hell to place you in. But he do. But people want to run to other places to do these things. Let's look at, um, for the definition to come upon thee, we're going to look at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And we're going to see, we're going to get one there. I, I, no, I'm sorry. Let's go to Numbers. Let's go to Numbers 11. We're going to pick it up at 17. Numbers 11, pick it up at 17. We're grabbing one there. And watch how clear this is. But it's but, but, but they want to say coming upon thee means something else. It says, and I will come down and talk with thee there. So the Lord is sitting there talking directly to him. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take I will take of the spirit which I which is upon thee. So we let him, we know this is going to talking with Moses, but he letting him know that the spirit which is upon Moses. So right now you're talking about a homosexual or a sodomite relationship, but he's talking about the same thing with most people want to make this mean something else. We can't make it mean one thing here, something there, something here, something there, something there. We can't keep making it mean something different to justify your theology. Because the Bible is not about theology. But people want to justify each little part to justify what it means. And where he's talking about clearly to over to, 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 to come upon thee, he's telling you right there. I shall take the spirit which is upon thee and put and will put it upon them. So what he's talking about, now he's gonna put some sexual stuff on them? No, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about a spirit. So and put it upon them. And they should bear the burden of the people with thee that thou shalt bear it not thyself alone. So he's making it perfectly clear exactly what he's going to do. So he's going to take one spirit and put it upon them, the same one that he had on the other one. We're going to look at another part. We're going to go to 1 Samuel. And we're going to look at uh, 1 Samuel. And we're going to pick that up and get another part out of there and see exactly what it's saying because most people still want to continue to think that uh that the lord is still talking about you know something that that makes absolutely no sense because how you gonna come upon something and they talking about he's doing he's doing this weird thing but we're gonna see another part in first Samuel. we're gonna look at 10. first Samuel, we're gonna pick it up at 10. And we're after gonna see that thou shalt come to the hill of god where is the garrison of the philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy. Again, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon them. The same as what? The same as the Spirit of the Lord should come upon Mary. That's all it's saying. Echo, repeat. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, 
where is the garrison of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. When these signs come upon thee, I, you know, people like to sit there and make all these different assumptions, but they fail, they, they fail to, to, to do the proper research. We're going to get even a little bit more. We're going to go into Judges, and we're going to pull a little bit more information. We're going to get this from Judges 3 and 10, and we're going to, we're going to get some more information about the same the thing. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Gushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. So the Lord clearly came upon him. So if the Lord came, if the Spirit of, came upon came upon him, how is it that when it come upon Mary, it planted a seed on Mary? These, these I'm talking about this. This is ludicrous information. But then what we have people doing, they go in. Um, different churches, they go in different different Sabbath day churches, they go in different Christian religion churches, they go in all these churches but then they'll come to one understanding when it gets to this about the seed of David and the seed of God they get to this, they have the same understanding that should let you know that understanding is, is a little bit twisted and it lets you know that it actually is a false teaching you're teaching, but we're going to get even more information where it's talking about the power of the highest, because the power of the highest, where it's talking about what she's going to have so we sitting there, it's talking about, well, this is where she planted the seed. I had one gentleman telling me one time, talking about, you know, well, how about, you know, people can do in this day and time, how they can do artificial some insemination. See, they weren't doing that back then. But what were they doing? They're trying, they trying to put in biblical time with 2016 time. You can't do that. Because what he's sitting here talking about, he's talking about what he's going to do with the power that he had. Because he had the same power as where he was able to split the Red Sea. He had the same power where he split the rock and, and had, had water flowing everywhere. This is the same This is the same guy we're dealing with, but we want to sit there and say one thing. One thing he you will never see in here is where you'll see where it says God had a seed. You can't find it in Scripture. But, but, but people will tell you that God that was God's seed. And nowhere in Scripture you ever find that. And if it ain't there, they're teaching you a false doctrine. Because... In all scripture, he will always explain itself. But we're going to get in a little bit more. We're going to go to Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. We're going to pick up some more right there. 51, and we're going to pick it up at 15. Jeremiah 51 and 15. It says, He had made the earth by his power. See, this is what he did with his power. And he had established the world by his wisdom. He had stretched out the heavens by his understanding. So we clearly know this is what he's do. He does. So if we sitting there seeing that, but people want to sit there and think that this is what he's doing, he's not talking about seeds that he's planting. We have to remember we have to worship God in his spirit and in truth. In his spirit and in his commandments by his understanding. This is what we have to do. And and Jesus tells you we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. God the Father is completely spirit. Completely spirit. He create things. He don't he don't sit there and plant seeds. But we're gonna clear up, we're gonna clear up that. Let's go to let's go to Luke 9. Let's go to Luke 9 and 42. Luke 9 and 42. It says and as he was yet coming, the devil threw himself down and, and tear himself. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were amazed at the mighty power of God. Why? They watched Jesus rebuke a spirit an evil spirit, and this is what happened. 
and they and they was amazed at the power of God. But while they wondered, everyone at that thing which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, let this thing sink down into your ears for the son of man shall be delivered into the hands of, of men. So he's telling you something's going to happen to him. He's only here to prove things. So we gonna understand one thing that Jesus is the only begotten through the resurrection with the power of God doing what? Raising him from the dead. That's how he became his begotten son. If you look at most other places, it'll say, even when he was baptized, this is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. But after Jesus had died and raised up, this is my only begotten son. That's the only one he raised from the dead. But we want to sit there and, and keep saying this, David. Let's go over to Romans 1. Romans 1. We're going to pick that up at 3. Romans 1 and pick it up at 3. And we're going to pick that up at 3. And we're going to hit two verses there. It says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our master. That's what all it's saying which was made of the seed of the, which was made of the sperm of David according to the flesh this is what happened so we are talking about that but Christ is the spirit of the Lord which was resting on him he's the anointed one which the, his spirit came and rested upon him that's what he's talking about but where he's from he's from the seed of David I'm telling you all the time this is where he's from according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection from the dead. It's clear as day, but people want to sit there and still teach this false doctrine that he's from, he's from, he's from the seed of God. They want to sit there. He went and planted this seed in Mary, and God is completely spirit. And this is what happened. Let's go to John. Let's go to John 1. We're going to pick it up at 12. John 1 and pick it up at 12. It says, But as many as received him to give to them gave, gave he power. Understand that power. To become what? The sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. So he's giving you the same power. Why? Because he's sitting there and the same as he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I would pray that the Father would send me. This is all he's been saying. Because what? He's going to give you the power to do what he did. That's why I said, you follow in his steps. He left an example for us to follow. To do it. Why? Because when that over when that when that when that when they um when the Holy Spirit overshadowed came upon her, see we're gonna find out some other things in here. We're gonna see what went on. But we're gonna but we're gonna make sure. But I want you to show me anywhere in the Bible where God said he have a seed. Because this is constantly telling you from the seed of David, but he was became the begotten through the power of the resurrection. This is how he became the power uh, begotten. But we're going to look at this overshadow. And we got to always remember, these definitions don't change. But people want to sit, they want to change the definition to fit their, their theology. And these definitions don't change to just fit their understanding. We're going to go to Exodus. And we're going to look at another part here. We're going to go to Exodus. And we're going to pick it up at 40. Exodus 40. And we're going to pick it up at 32. Exodus 40 and 32. Soon as they get it, it's they went into the tent of the congregation. And when they came near unto the altar, they washed, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. Same as Mary. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Same Moses as Mary. was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up... What we have to understand here is, when that cloud went over, what happened? 
So what happened? That's why they had to tell you in that order. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Mary, and what? And then it said that he going to overshadow thee. And what do Paul tell you? We are called tabernacles. It's the same thing. So he dwelt within her. But we have to understand exactly what they're saying. Echo, repeat. Echo, repeat. And they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed, as the mm -hmm. Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. Same as Mary. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. Same but as Mary went on to, to her up, cousin's house. Then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So this is what went on, but the same thing is it overshadowed. So what we're going to do is look at another part. We're going to go and look at some New Testament and see the same thing, and let's see what happened there. We're going to go to Matthew 17. We're going to pick it up at 5. We're going to pick up that one first because all I want you to do is get an understanding of overshadowed. So 17 and picking it up at 5. It says, while, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice came out of the cloud and said, this is my beloved son. It's not saying my only begotten son. See, this is my beloved son. Because as long as he continues to do what he's doing, he will be resurrected. So he said, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Didn't Moses say, you, be, you better hearken to this one. This is the Lord saying the same identical thing. And this is why you have to see what went on. But we go, but we still going to deal with a couple of other ones because we want to have a clear understanding of exactly what to overshadow. So I actually did a little bit more than what I should do. But we want to hone in on it to make sure we know what overshadowing means because overshadow means overshadow. But people want to tell you that overshadow means something like having sexual relations are coming upon these having sexual relations. And that's not what it's saying. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to look at Luke 9 and 34. It says, While he thus spake there, came a cloud and overshadowed them. So now a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. So the same thing happened there. It overshadowed them. So what happened? You know, we have to understand exactly what scripture is saying. But people like to sit there and do and tell you these little fairy tale things. This is why so many fairy tale movies are out. Because people can sit there and they high rise the Bible so they just end up high rising everything else. We're going to go to another part. Let's go to Acts 5 and pick it up at 15. Acts 5 and pick it up at 15. It says, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on on beds and couches that they uh, that that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. So Peter's supposed to overshadow what lay on him or something. See, this is what this is saying. And that, and that, and as I said, as Mary was filled with the Holy Ghost, it's saying the same thing. And it was resting upon Mary. So when you look at Luke 1 and 35, it says, An angel answered to her, and, and the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, which we just found out, resting upon her, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, just like a cloud. Therefore that holy thing which shall be born to thee should be called the Son of God. That's all it was saying. So while, while, so while Joseph, which we're going to deal with Joseph also, while dealing with Joseph, we're going to see this is what happened why she when she was with Joseph. But we're going to clear this. Because most people think that she didn't, um, that Joseph never went into her. But we're going to see, we're going to find out. See, because even at that young age, see, she's still called a virgin, she can still be called a maiden. But most people want to sit there and they want to hold and be dogmatic about something and thinking something that didn't happen. But we're going to get an understanding exactly on Joseph. Because 
people, I'm telling you, people have rise this Bible many different ways. And we're going to go through this, and we're going to look at Matthew 1 and 1 to get a clear, clear mind and go through this Bible and make sure he is who we say he is. And he's not who these people say he is. In Matthew 1 and 1, it says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David. So how are you going to sit there and say something else? But this is what people do. And then it goes on more. The son of Abraham. It moves down. But guess what? Let's get down to, to Matthew 18. Because Matthew 18, it starts going through some things. Matthew 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus, Jesus Christ was on this wise. So now this wise, you need to get this understanding. <laughs> but, watch, but watch what's going to happen. It says, when as Mary was espoused, as I said, she was espoused. She was engaged. Even, even you know, it, it, it's really, it's really a trip when people sit there and try to give you a different understanding and don't and and, and don't know what actually went on. But they, but they want to sit there and tell you this is completely different. But what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna see what happened when she was espoused to Joseph before they came together. Keep came together. If you have a pen or pencil, write that down because I'm going to address it before they came together. So we're going to address came together. I'm going to address that for you. But so before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, we in verse 18, she was exposed to Joseph. She was engaged. And I told you back there, once a man go into a woman, she becomes his wife. This is how Hebrews understand it. This is how it was done back there with the Israelites. Let's look at verse 19. Then time passed. Let's understand. Let's understand. Let's understand the English language. As well as the Hebraic language. Then time passed. Joseph, her husband. Oh. Just one verse up. She was exposed. Now it's saying husband. Being a just man. We're going to find out exactly what that actually means. A just man. Not willing to make her a public example. And we're going to find out why. <clears throat> public example was minded to put her away privately. We're going to find out why. But while he thought on these things. Why did he have to think? See, we're going to find out why. Why did Joseph have to think on wanting to put her away privately? Why do you have to think about it? See, this is what you need to think about when you read scripture. And when you read it, study it, because we need to understand he wasn't willing to make her a public example, he being a just man. But why was he thinking about this? And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna address everything. It says, um, it was mine to put her away privately, but while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph. Thou son of David. Again, from the son of David, from the sperm of David, from the seed of David. Same thing. This is who he is. Fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife. He's going to tell you why. For that which is conceived in her is, which is conceived between who? Between y'all two, which conceived is of the Holy Ghost. But we're going to clear that. We're going to clear all this up. Because she was found and was filled with the Holy Ghost. And where it says, was... What we have to do, that's past time. Not coming up time. It's past time. Joseph, though he, he because he wanted to put her away for his own reasons. But we're going to watch because it's saying Joseph was a just man and she conceived. But he was he wanted to think on how to put her away privately. But we're going to find out why. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go back in some place. Then we're going to come up and we're going to catch right back up. Let's look at Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs. Uh, 24. Proverbs 24. We're going to pick it up at 16. Proverbs 24 and we're going to pick it up at 16. And it says, For a just man fallen seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So, just men fall. But he was a just man. But he wasn't willing to put it away privately. But why? Why was he willing to put her away? Why he even want to put her away? Because he's a just man. 
but we're gonna find out why. We're getting ready to find out why right now. We're gonna go right here. We're gonna go to Matthew, back to Matthew 1. And we're gonna pick this up at 21. Matthew 1 and 21. And we're getting ready to find out some stuff right now. 1 and 21. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So he letting him know she ain't naming him, you ain't naming him. The most high God naming him. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now, this is the same sin, sin, uh, situation that you are here, even what they talked about with Samson. Because he said Samson going to save him from the Philistines. See, Samson was put together for a different reason. But this one was put together to save his people from their sins. And now we're going to pick it up at 22. It says, now all these things were done that might be fulfilled. All what things? That the Holy Spirit going to come up on Mary and rest on her. He's going to overshadow while y'all getting busy and this going to be happening. And all this was done so it be fulfilled what was spoken of by the by the uh, spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, "Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, shall be with a, with child, and shall bring forth a son that he shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us." So he's telling Joseph why this is happening that this, that this is being fulfilled. Now what? Now watch how key what Joseph gonna do. Then Joseph. Being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. Now, most people just overlook this. But what you got to do, understand what words mean. This bidden him, he commanded him. Go look it up and you'll see exactly what he commanded him. Why did he command this man to do this? But he's a just man. Because he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. But we're gonna, But we're going to find out that why. Because many missed that the angel of the Lord bidden him to take his wife. He commanded. But guess what? Other ones was commanded to take her too. After something happened. He had to follow this law. It was a law that was already set back then. But we're going to find out why. So after he raised up, the Lord had bidden him. And he took, and he took him his wife. And he knew her not until she had brought forth her, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, this is the problem. Now, they want to sit there and still sit there. Well, he still never had sex. But watch this. You're going to see something very, very, very important to why he had to take her as his wife. Because we're going to go down to, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. And we're going to pick it up at 13. Deuteronomy 22 and 13. And we're going to see exactly right there what went on right there because a certain thing happened with him at Deuteronomy 22 and 13 that we got to find out what went on. It says, if any man take a wife, if any man take a wife and he go into her, now he done went into her and hate her and give an occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and and and, uh, and when I came into her, I found her not to be a maid. Now you can't use that one. He being a just man. This is why he was thinking of stuff because he know he can't use that. That's one of the problems. Then shall his father of the damsel of his mother shall take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel uh, virginity uh, the token of the damsel virginity unto the elders of the city of the gate and basically it's, it's like a cloth that she laid on while they, while, while, while they had sex and then when, you know a virgin she ended up bleeding and so then the blood is there and fold it up the father takes it and they keep that so if this ever comes up he can go to the elders unroll it hey no she was a virgin so you can't bring no evil name upon her so he know he couldn't use that. Why? Because he already slept with her. But we're gonna find out some little bit, little bit more information. See, once he slept with her, he already know this he can't use. But he had to think of it to see and reason out stuff. Same way you see these little crooked people how they try to reason stuff out. Oh yeah, if I do this, then this gonna happen. If I do this one, this one. Same thing getting ready to go on right here. And the same thing why Joseph had to sit there and he had to think on this. He had to meditate on this to get an understanding to see how he can get away with this. 
It said the father of the damsels, uh, <clears throat> and the son, and, the, and, and shall the father of the damsel and her mother shall take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel of virginity unto the elders of the city of the gate. And the damsel father shall say unto the elders, I have given my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. That could have been the issue, but we don't know. But we're going to go down. We're going to get the understanding. And lo, he hath given occasion of speech against her, saying, I have found uh, not thy daughter a maid. So he found her not a maid. Same thing with what he said. Same thing, he find it not a virgin. You see how they flip this around. Sometimes it's your virgin, sometimes they say a maiden. Same thing, it goes all the way through the Bible the same way. And yet, these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Now they have laid out this, this the tokens of the daughter's virginity on it. And that shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city, and the elders of the city should take that man and chasten him. So now they're gonna now they're gonna get in his butt and they're gonna and they're gonna whoop his butt. This is what it's saying right here. But watch how this language changes. And this is what Joseph, this is all what was going through Joseph's head. Because he know if this token is going on, this was going to happen. But guess what? He didn't have a token because he already they already did it. So watch this. Then the elder of the city should take the man and chase him. And they shall immense, immense him with a hundred shackles of silver, which he was going to have to give up to, to, to the father. And give them unto the father of the damsel, because he had brought up an evil name upon the virgin of Israel, and shall be his wife. So then, and he may not put her away all his days. So then, if this comes up, and she comes out, and they get away with it, he can't never put her away. But he wanted to put her away privately. But if this happened, he can't put her away. But watch, it's still got some more here. But it says... But if this thing be true, and the token of virginity be not found for the damsel, this is what he knew. It's no token. Joseph's thinking on this. He's thinking, okay, well now she don't have no token, so if she don't have no token. See this, he had to pay a hundred hundred shekels. He didn't want to do that, but now he, oh, but she don't have no token. He's in there, but if none be be found, now let now 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 let's see. Then they should bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. Then, then, uh, and the man of the city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she have wrought folly in Israel and played a whore in her father's house. So shall thy put away thy evil away from among you. This is what happened. So he knew if he get away with it and he can get he can get that through, they gonna kill her. They just gonna chase him, and he just gotta pay a hundred shekels. But if it flips around the other way, she gonna die. He had to think on this. But the angel already knew it went down, cause the Lord seen it. That he said when he overshadowed it and the other. So when he came up on it and he and he went into it the first time, she got pregnant the first time. So that's why the angel bid him. You have to take her as your wife. You can you. Think whatever you want to think. No, this this is a wrap at this point. This is what happened. Now, when you try to find ways around it, what he was trying to do, he can not do anything. That's why when you look at Matthew 1 and 18. But now we're going to look at came together, meaning gatherings coming together, as I always explain to people all the time. This is all it means. And mainly what they do in, in Hebrew weddings, what they do, they 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 come together. Same as with that token, they come together. The father will give the uh, the the bridegroom a token. So as people out there partying, they they drinking their wine, they having in time, they having a festive time and everything enjoying. They go in the back. And they go into a tent, and he lay with his wife. They finish. Rolls up the tent. Gives it back to her parents. This is normally what happens. But as they joined, they came together with crowds. They came together to to, 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 to celebrate this joyous occasion. We're going to look at some of this where, where people had gathered together or came together. We're going to go to Matthew 27. Matthew 27 and 62. Matthew 27 and 62. It says, Now the next day, the following uh, they uh, that followed the day of the preparation of the chief priests 
Pharisees came together unto Pilate. So the same thing, they just came together. It's not came together so before they came together. See, before they came together, before this, before this gathering, uh, this festivity happened, same, it's telling you the same identical language. We'll look at uh, Acts 19 and 32. Acts 19 and 32, it says, Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not w not went forth where that uh, that they were come together. So so they was confused about their coming together. But we're gonna look at another one again. We're gonna look at Luke five and fifteen. Luke five and fifteen. It says, "But so much was more." Then the fame abroad him, a great multitude came together to what? To hear and to be healed by him in their infirmities. So we know clearly what this is talking about. We know this coming together. But Jesus is according to God, is for the seed of David, according to the flesh that in, in, in Christ rested on him. That's what happened. When you look at Romans 1 and 3, Romans 1 and 3, it continually goes through what happened. It says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, made of the seed of David according to the flesh, declared to be the son of God with power according to, to, to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So it's clear. But where's that seven spirit that I told you that he had? Because we had, we had six in Isaiah, but I told you it was seven. But we're going to clear that also. It says in John 14 and 15. John 14 and 15. It says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. That's the seventh spirit. Now watch how, now watch how Jesus ended up telling you whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. That's the one that he was talking about. So when you see what Jesus came with, Jesus came with grace and truth. When you look at John 1.14 and also John 1.17, it tells you what he was doing. So when you see this going on, we have to all, always have to understand exactly what was going on all the time. We can't be sitting there going through, well, he means this here and this means that, and let me go pick up this Donovan dictionary and this, and we're going to get to me. You can stay right in the Bible all the time. The Bible going to give you the understanding on everything that you need. We're going to look at another one to where, you know, Jesus, the firstborn of the resurrection. So question if this... <clears throat> And this, is, and this is something that really needs to be answered. If Jesus was the Spirit, we're going to get this understanding. Spirits don't die. So then, if spirits don't die, how did Jesus die and was resurrected from the dead? If Jesus was Spirit. See, people try, well, you got to remember, well, you know, he, you know, well, he came in sin like flesh. He came... He was 100% flesh. If Jesus was spirit, how did the spirit die and how did the spirit get resurrected? Because spirits don't die. That's why we still got evil spirits still continually running around right now. Because he said he's got to take care of that problem. Let's look at Hebrews. We're going to look at Hebrews 5 and 5. Hebrews 5 and 5. And it tells you right there. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he said unto, unto him, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. This is how he this is how he did this. He begotten him. So we're gonna look at a few concrete scriptures. And we're going to look at Acts 13 and 33. Acts 13 and 33. It says, God hath filled the same unto their children and that have raised up 
Jesus again as it was uh, as is also written in the second psalm again thou art my son this day I have begotten thee and the second psalms is psalms 2 and 7 if you want to write that down 2 and 7 if you want to write that down and we're going to go through that so what we want to do we want to understand everything within scripture we always want to make sure that we have a clear understanding but we have people who always want to observe they know the days months times and years actually we're going to tell you, let's go to let's go to galatians we're going we're going to finish we're going to close out with this we're going to go to galatians we're going to pick it up at four we're going to go to ten galatians four and ten it says ye observe days and months and times and years i am afraid of you least i have bestowed upon you labored in vain we have many people that's out there laboring in vain thinking they're laboring in truth because they fell into to, to, to precept the bible but we're going to pick up the last two verses we're going we're gonna to start right there at 15 it says where is then the blessed the blessedness you speak of for i bear you record of if i have been of if it had been possible you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me did you believe in this crap that you was that you was preaching? So, what I said again is that we have to understand that Jesus was one hundred percent flesh, as I always said, and the Spirit rested upon him, and gave him the power to become the only begotten Son of God. Nowhere in Scripture you will ever find where God has given a seed. God is 100% spirit. We have to worship him in his spirit and in truth. And if we do it any other kind of way, we're sitting there talking about a false doctrine. We talk, that's why we have so many different ones. We have we have a, a lot of these Sabbath churches to where they have differences and then they're split based on what? Because you should be able to reason you got to come to one understanding under this book. But most of them can't do that. We have a lot of people who don't even want to accept the Apocrypha. The, the original books came with the Apocrypha and they before they even came to the United States, but then they get over here in the United States, and then they remove them, and then they want to sit there and tell you the pocket was a fake. Then they want to tell you that they have all this stuff in there. I had one telling me the book of Joshua, the book of Enoch was in there. I don't know what book they found it was like that. It makes no sense. We have to understand when we go into these books, we have to make sure research the book yourself before people speak on those books. But we're gonna pick this last scripture. And we're going to close it out. And that's verse 16. As I therefore come become your enemy because I tell you the truth. And this is the thing that I would leave you with. And I thank each and everybody. And I wish that you was richly blessed knowing that we do know one thing. Jesus was prophesied throughout scripture. He was going to come, live, suffer, and die for the sins of man. And with that, we know that he was from 100% the seed of David. Nowhere do God tell you he's coming from his seed. What he said is, he's going to raise him from the dead. And he did that. Once he raised him from the dead, that body that Jesus walked around in, in 100% flesh, became spiritual. This is why they seen him. This is why when Donnie Thomas, he said that this is my Lord and my God. This is why he was able to put his finger in his, in his side, letting me know this is this is the same person that I walked around with who I touched him and he was flesh. So let's remember that. And let's always keep remembering that we always have to make sure that we precept scripture, clearly understand what we're saying all the time. And always teach what's in the Bible, not what's in a dictionary, an encyclopedia, in a newspaper, or something off the web. We always got to make sure when we're teaching God's Word, we stay directly in the book. So with that, I wish each and everybody was richly edified. And with all that, I bid a shalom.